Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight, uh, Thursday, June 16th, 2022, our normally scheduled Board of Selectmen's meeting. I call our meeting to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our next section, the or actually, well, additions and changes to the agenda. Uh, the only thing I would like to uh, discuss is uh, last meeting, we were talking about the uh, LGBTQ uh, res or, uh, proclamation. And that is supposed to have been discussed as per our minutes from last meeting. So I would like to move uh, item five to after four, uh, or I'm sorry, eight C. That way we can have a discussion, hopefully come to an agreement and make a proclamation. So does anybody have any problems with that? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will do that. Our next section is our public comment section. Um, and that is for anyone in attendance who wish to briefly address the board. We ask that you please state name and address and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, if you wish to make a comment, please type comment in the chat box and you will be recognized. And no comments, no. Dan, we do have, um, this is Donna speaking. Please, yes, please. We, we did receive um, several letters and emails in support of the LGBTQ Pride Month proclamation. Mm -hmm. um, we re and those will be made part of the record. We received letters or emails of support from Aaron Boussier, Kim Goldberg, Ron Goldberg, Meg Clifton, Nicole Collins, Nicole Matthews, and Mary Rose Mead. And the selectmen should have received all of those by email. Yes, that's some it. came in today, so yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so our next thing would be appointments and resignations. And we have one resignation, uh, and I'm getting off track here. Um, we have a letter uh, from Jessica uh, Dapis resigning her position on the RAM Board of Education. Uh, so the motion would be that we move the hearing board of selectmen accept the resignation of Jessica Dapis from the RAM Board of Education with regret and thanks for her years of dedicated service. Further, that the selectmen designate Friday, June 17th, 2022 as the posting date for the vacancy notice. The 35th and final day by which nominations shall be received is Friday, July 22nd, 2022. Uh, Mr. And we Mr. Have Chairman? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, you, Andy. You kind, of, you kind of jumped right in without recognizing me. So that was what was in the packet, but we have a, an updated uh, motion with different dates. And oh, Donna's, okay. Donna's got it up on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so I will reread the motion. Move the Hebron Board of Select would accept the resignation of Je Jessica Dapis from the RAM Board of Education with regret and thanks for her years of dedicated service. Further, that the selectmen designate Friday, June 24th, 2022, as the posting date for the vacancy notice. The 35th and final day by which nominations shall be received is Friday, July 29th. 2022. So, hearing the motion, uh, any comments? I'd just like to say, Jessica, if you're out there in Radio Land, uh, I hope you're enjoying Vermont. It probably is beautiful up there. Uh, so, at any rate, 
Any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Leader. Yeah, I, I just I've, I've worked with uh, Jessica over the years in a number of projects, and I just wanted to uh, recognize, you know, or at least comment on the impact that she's had in, in our community for so many years, and her willingness to to give back in a variety of functions uh, is it, very much appreciated. She's uh, helped me a few different times on, on things that I've been working on, you know, and, and for the town and, and really a great member of our community. And um, yeah, I think uh, Maine is her destination or where she is, but uh, uh, we miss, we'll miss people like that in our community. So I just wanted to make that comment. She was definitely a, a driving force in our community for a long, long time. And, and like uh, and many people who volunteer, uh, sort of the unsung heroes in our community, I just wanted to personally uh, thank her for, for what she did for the community, including the role of, on the Board of Ed, but even other, a lot of other things that she's done. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. P Peter, she's right next to me, and she heard you, and she said thank you, and she thinks the world of you and has enjoyed all the things that you've collaborated on. So um, she's excited for a new life up here in Maine. Um, but you know, obviously, with a little regret and sadness. But uh, thank you, Peter. That was very kind of you. You're welcome. Thank you. Other comments? Other comments? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Uh, going across, Tiffany? Tiffany Dealey, aye. Gail? Gail Richmond, aye. Uh, Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Our next thing will be the uh, town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So to date, we've been working on Juneteenth, as everybody hopefully knows, um, at Burn Hill Park in the Peters House. So it's going to be a Juneteenth celebration along with uh, Hebron Day summer kickoff. There's quite a bit of stuff that's going to be going on this weekend, June 18th. Um, it starts off at 930 in the morning with the Wall Street Cemetery dedication of African uh, American section, rain or shine. And from 2 to 4 p.m., there's a participants in archaeological dig with Hebron Code. Uh, learn our history, both local and national. There's live music, interaction, drumming, a tour of the historic Peters House, and learn how to be an ally. Uh, so there's quite a bit of stuff going on. We have some volunteers that work very hard, including Rich Marzi, Code, um, Parks and Recs, even though they're not volunteers, uh, and a lot of other people I'm sure I'm missing, but... Uh, Looks like they're going to have great weather, so hopefully people are going to come out and support that. I'm pretty sure they will be, but that's going to be a big thing for Hebron, so I wanted to at least acknowledge that. And I will be there in the morning at 930 or so. I'll be at the cemetery, but after that, unfortunately, I have a family wedding in the early afternoon that I won't be able to attend the other festivities, so I apologize in advance. Um, so I've been working also to regionalize the ACO, which is the animal control officer. We're going to regionalize, hopefully, with the town of uh, Columbia. And we're working on that agreement, which will come in front of the Board of Selectment. Uh, Willie Bell, after 25 plus years, is going to step down as Hebron's ACO. The town was uh, well served underneath his able um, tenor and uh, his discretion at that, that's not an easy position to hold. And we, we, we received very little complaints while he did that. So I uh, wish kudos to him, but we're working diligently to move forward and regionalize that position. I've been working with the state and local police. Speeding has become uh, a very uh, hot topic in town. Uh, it's not easy to collaborate with the residents. The police department is doing the best they can to combat the situation. We have moved signs around. We have um, given out tickets. We've contacted and dealt with most of the offenders that you read or hear about on social media, whether it be motorcycles, popping exhausts, or certain vehicles. We've engaged with them. It's a process but uh, it's not going um, unattended. So I just want to make that clear. 
We did have a post meeting of the Maple Fest this week at the lower level of the library. Uh, that went very well. Uh, Maple Fest went very well last year and they're making plans and getting ready to see how we're gonna do and what we're gonna change for the upcoming season already, believe it or not. The Views magazine is out. Uh, hopefully everybody's got that. It's it, it's um, promoting, you know, Hebron Day summer kickoff. So it was perfect timing. I'm glad to see some heads nodding that see that they received that. We uh, went through with the tax sale and we did very, very well. We took in a lot of money, uh, well over $300,000. Uh, there's still three properties that didn't get bid on one uh, we couldn't move forward with, but the other two were, we're going to start uh, foreclosure proceedings. But other than that, we did receive a lot of money in, in doing that. So we were, you know, very pleased. Also, I'm working with the new town planner and the town engineer, along with the uh, engineering company, Luke's, regarding the Wall Street sidewalks. There's been some borings done, and we have to put a little bit of a retaining wall up that wasn't originally in the first plan to satisfy SHPO's concerns of that uh, designated area, which seems to be moving forward. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that. And then most recently, we are setting up interviews for the assessor's office and a new deputy fire marshal next week. So those are some of the things that we've been working on. And that's it. Thank you. And um... Just want to also do a kudos out to the uh, Hebron Historical Commission for all the work that's been done at the Peters House. Uh, they actually have a temporary CO now for the first floor. Uh, I urge people to, to go in, see the structure, as well as the other events that are going to be going on there on Saturday. Uh, our next would be space here. Uh, our old business. So did you want to talk about this, Andy? I did. So under old business, item A would be the American Rescue Plan, state and local recovery funds approval, and then also the process for the special town meeting. So I had sent out after the last board of selectors meeting, I was asked to reach out to the town attorney on the question of what they would be voting on, and especially if someone they wanted to change or, or, or delete uh, an item on that list uh, at that time the select i'm sorry the town attorney supplied us with his recommendation and there was two recommendations um, i i'm 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 asking that the board of selectmen consider uh the second recommendation which would be to cancel its special town meeting in regards to the rescue plan funds we still want to go through with the special town meeting for the purpose of the raymond property but um, cancel a special star meeting notice in a public hearing, which we would change. The potential problem with the option is that it might raise attention to the fact that you would be effectively stripping the town meeting of authority and draw extra scrutiny and pressure on the board of selectmen not to approve certain items that might have otherwise not been challenged without extra scrutiny. So what, what this says in a nutshell is the board of selectmen now already possess the power to approve the items or delete items as you move forward. The legislative body, if it goes to a special town meeting, can vote on that list with the projects and the amounts of money, and it probably could be challenged down the road. It's such a moving target, and we've put these projects in with very little study and background that I'm definitely sure there's going to be a lot of changes. So that it could get challenged and I, I would hate to see that. So my suggestion would be we move forward that night with another public hearing to get more town input, but the final say on the approved projects would lie with the Board of Selectmen. Because I'm sure as we move forward with planning and zoning and regulations and, and, and state statutes, things are gonna change. So I would hate to, I'd hate to tie our hands and that's pretty much what that would have been if we went to an actual vote at a special town meeting versus the selectmen already possessing the power through the, you know, the government agency that gives us that power on these funds. I, I hope that was clear.
Uh, yes. It gives the public another opportunity to weigh in and and, and I think it makes vie for I, the projects that they 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 want to see approved. But if there's other projects they they feel we shouldn't be using these monies on, they still have another chance to voice their opinion. And then it's up to the selectmen to have the final decision whether to take that advice and add or delete items. It, it would have been a little bit more of a gray area if the special town meeting being a legislative body if assembled for a vote on a project and a list, and then we didn't go forward with those projects, it would muddy the waters. And that was never our intention. Our intention was to be transparent and get them involved as much as possible. So I was the one that suggested that. And then after talking with the town attorney, I think the second option is better for everybody. Excuse me. Uh, I myself agree. I think it, it makes it a lot cleaner. Uh, and we're able to move forward a lot more readily, uh, which I think is, is critical to try to, to get as much of the bang for our buck as we can. Um, other people, uh, other thoughts? Uh, Dan? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I agree also. And I think we've made some great strides and efforts to get people's input. And a lot of people have had comments and suggestions. And if we feel we need to get even a little more, let's do that. But I, I like that idea and let's get a little more input and let's move on it and make the decisions to go forward. I'm in favor of that. So what's our next step to finish our discussion and then vote on it? Well, uh, the Board yeah. of Selectmen, and the Board of Finance have already approved the list as it stands today. What, what I had suggested that we had bring it to a special town meeting for input, but then as we did that and we thought it out and we looked at what the vote might be, we had a list of projects and we had a list of amounts, which neither are finalized. So when questioning the town attorney, you know, he gave the two options. You could do that, but it, it, it that's your legislative body approving the projects and the funding and the amounts. And, and none of that is secured yet. We, we've got estimates and proposed projects, but we still need to go through planning and zoning on some of them. We still need to meet with boards and commissions. I'm sure some of the numbers are going to change. So it just doesn't really require a vote of the legislative body. Well, I, I wasn't. I didn't mean a vote on the projects and the allocation. I meant a vote on our process to say this is the way we're going to do it. I, uh, that, that would be premature to say we're going to vote on I meant the process. Does that make sense, guys? That we're going to do it with another town meeting and get more input? Um, has nothing to do with making a determination on what projects or how much money each one's going to get, just how we go about doing it. Uh, I like this as it was presented. It it means that we, the Board of Selectmen, do still have our say in the process. And that's what I was concerned about. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with what everyone said. I think it's a good move. I think it's a good adjustment, Andy. It, it makes sense for providing transparency and information. As Mark said, we have solicited quite a bit of input and if you, as I look at the list, I think we've represented a pretty broad array of constituents uh, with the different well thought out projects that have been recommended through the through the town manager's office and through, you know, Board of Select and Board of Finance, all the folks that have touched it. And so it also gives the public an opportunity to present some ideas that maybe we could consider in that phase two of the funding. Um, so I think it serves the right purpose by having it with this adjustment, this structure. Um, it should be in the hands of the Board of Selectmen to ultimately decide because of the reasons you articulated, but it still involves the public uh, and it gives us a chance to hear more from them, especially as we move forward. So it's a good, I just wanted to express that I, I think it's a good move, a good change, a good catch, uh, and we still um, give the public an ample opportunity to, um, to engage in the process. So thank you. And I see Tiffany is also nodding in agreement, I'm assuming. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I guess my only question would be, um, does does this change then from a special town meeting to just a public hearing or do we keep the call as it is? That would be my only question from a procedural perspective. 
So that's where I was going to answer Mark's question. I think that's what his question was pertaining to. So as I stated earlier, you have a resolution in there. We still need to move forward with the special town meeting because of the Raymond property. But what I would propose yeah. is we warn another public hearing prior to that special town meeting that was already posted. We've changed it. Hopefully you guys will agree to, uh, like, like I said, another public hearing before the special town meeting. The special town meeting is June 28th at 7 p.m. We could have um, the other one at 6.30. Correct. Okay. Do we need to do a motion on that? Uh, yes. Or is just our okay. Yes. Um so you can use a portion of that motion that's already be it resolved. The special town meeting be scheduled for June 28, 2022, 7 p.m. in the Douglas Library Community Room. Um and, and take that out, the ARPA funds. And you, and you could do Joe Chris. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to, to figure out the, the quickest, easiest verbiage for this. Uh, so we have the special town meeting. Uh, is it still going to be a town meeting or is it going to have a public hearing? You're going to have a public hearing first for the ARPA funds. And then we still need to continue with the special town meeting for the acquisition of the Raymond property. Okay. So do we, do we need to make a motion? And if so, I'm trying to get the proper verbiage. Yeah, Donna, can you help them with that? Sure, <laughs> Larson, um, you, I think it should be two separate motions. The first Correct. motion would be to amend the call for the special town meeting to um, remove the reference to ARPA funding and just move ahead with the Raymond acquisition. And then um, it, that would be the first motion. Okay. And then you could do a second motion to schedule a uh, public hearing to discuss ARPA funding. Okay, so motion one would be to amend the town meeting. I, could, I couldn't write that fast. <laughs> okay, so the motion would be to amend the call for the special town meeting for um, Tuesday, June 28th to remove reference to ARPA funding and move ahead with the Raymond property acquisition. Okay, so hearing the motion, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Lichman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, I. Okay, and then the next one would be to have a second uh, town meeting. Public hearing. A public, public hearing, hearing uh, for the purposes of getting people's final inputs on the proposed uh, ARPA funding items under. Uh, round one is that good enough I, we would want to include the date and in the time and the date, so exactly. to, uh, tuesday june 28th at 6 30 p.m and i was going to um, say at the douglas the library at the douglas library so okay so hearing the second motion again all in favor please signify by saying aye tiffany tiffany teeley aye dale Gail Richman, aye. Mark. Mark Rivera, aye. Peter. Peter Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Okay. Got that done. Okay. Thank you. For, sorry, that was a little convoluted, but. No, it, we got through it. That's what we do. Our next thing, uh, discussing the uh, cannabis 
moratorium and the potential next steps. Uh, Andy, I know you found out a bunch of information, trying to get more information. So again, turning it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So under this, thank you. Under item B, cannabis moratorium and potential next steps, the selectmen have voted to send the question on the regulations of cannabis in the town of Hebron to the voters on November 8, 2022 ballot. That's going to be an advisory question. The selectmen have expressed interest in holding public informational sessions prior to the vote. The selectmen are proposing to have presenters at these informational sessions. The town hall manager will provide an update of information to be provided at the public hearing. Selectman Casper may provide additional information from his contact. So what I had done is I had reached out to CCM and originally they said, well, if you get any information, could you share it with us? Because it was such a new thing in Connecticut. They didn't think they had a lot of information. And then, of course, they sent me a bunch of, of information a little bit later than that that I shared with all the board of selectmen. There was a lot of reading uh, and a lot of it wasn't exactly what Dan, you had asked me to do. You wanted either a regulatory agency or uh, zoning enforcement or somebody in charge of a town with the pros and cons and how it's going so far. Uh, Selectman Thiele had sent me a couple of contacts. I did reach out to them and I hadn't heard back. And then I know also uh, Selectman Casper is working with somebody. So I would uh, turn it over to those two at this time. Go ahead, Tiffany. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, the, the only the only the contacts that I had recommended, they weren't necessarily personal contacts, but I thought it might be helpful um, to reach out to um, people on Massachusetts Advisory Board um, because they've had this for several years now. So they have people conceivably, if they get back to us, who could speak to how it's going overall in Massachusetts. Um, I also sent over um, several researchers as well. Um, so they weren't people I had personal connections to, um, unlike Peter, um, but I thought that it would be at least helpful to try to reach out to different places that have instituted this and to, and to see how it's going. That's, that's all I have to update. And I have spoken to, to my contact, uh, and uh, on the city council and Lacey Washington. And, and again, as I said before, they instituted the sale of cannabis, uh, a, a couple of years ago. So they. Like a lot of like what we're hearing, there isn't necessarily a lot of easily attainable. Here's some specific uh, data, but there's no, he's work. He's going to be able to get me some information. He has regular contact with the, the chief of police and all that on, on a myriad of issues. And so, um, and some different, um, specifics uh, that he's going to be able to put together. So I am working on that and we'll have, uh, more information as soon as it becomes available. So that is in motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just piggyback off what Pete just said? Yes, please. I was going to ask you to talk to you in a second anyway. Yes, please. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. So what information you get depends on who you talk to. So if you talk to educators and you talk to police officers, it has its downsides and problematic downsides. And I don't see just being reasonable how you could not see that selling cannabis over in the plaza near Ram would go smoothly. And somehow the way teenagers buy alcohol, the way teenagers buy vapes, that that wouldn't carry over to having a straw buyer to buy that. And that's the way a lot of police officers see it. That's the way educators see it because you deal with this every day. So for any state to say that this thing is smooth and it's great and it's going well is disingenuous. And for people that do this every day, it, it, it's it's not a smooth, great thing for everybody. So I just wanted to add that, guys. Uh, this is this is some of the input that, yeah, I I want to be able to give the public as much information as possible pro and con uh you know so you know i would be looking hopefully getting information from you know the different you know the, I, I guess it would be the state police uh departments of some of these states massachusetts uh i'm not even sure what other states it's legal or not in 
Um, you know, but but their outlook. Uh, you're talking about the educational, the education professionals. Uh, here we have AHM, who I feel uh, potentially could have a, a, a tremendous amount of valuable input, just so that everybody has got a a well-rounded uh, set of facts that they can then make a, a decision on, um, you know, so uh, yeah, it, it, the problem is trying to, to apparently get this type of information apparently is a lot harder than uh, I thought it would be. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I think you're right. And I think Mark makes a good point. And I, it, the idea that this is going to be, hey, it's perfect is, is unrealistic one or, or hey it's awful and you know the town of Lacey washington is now you know a, a crime ridden you know cesspool no it's just really assessing the risks even if we give folks a chance to think about the positives and the negatives as you said and and the risks that are out there again the world i the business world i'm in we assess risk every day and so it's is it an acceptable risk or not uh with whatever modification so i think the idea that we are able to, even if it's in some respects anecdotal, at least it gets people thinking more broadly, um, positively and negatively about the issue so they can make a well-informed decision. So I think even if we, uh, even if we, have, if we have more information, it's just better information. So people can maybe move beyond having already made a decision and it maybe it won't, but at least we've done everything we could do to share with them some thoughts from the different perspectives. And so I think it will be hard um to get some of the data that we're looking for because it's relatively new even in areas that have had it for a while um and then there's a lot of issues demographically things are different based on how your city or town is located relative to a highway and and things like that obviously crime can vary based on on sort of some other demographic characteristics um so there's a lot going on but i think we're just going to make a good effort here to provide as much information as we have and i think that's Terrific, and then let me let people make their own decisions. So I think we're at least moving in a good direction here. Thank you. Uh, one other avenue that you just tickled my brain on, obviously it's pr pretty easy, no. uh, would be insurance companies. Um, you know, maybe they would have input one way or another. I, I don't know. Um, you know, actually, uh, it, it's shame on me. Uh, you know, obviously, apparently I'm on record to say shame on me. So shame on me because the company that I actually work for has a cannabis insurance program. Um, so I will reach out to them in addition to the other research I'm doing. Uh, you know, I work for a company that does dozens and dozens and dozens of specialty insurance programs, and one of them is cannabis. And so I will um, uh, reach out to see if I can draw upon some, some data there uh, because obviously the insurance industry doesn't go into business to lose money. So um, they're, they're, they clearly have some facts in which, um, and to your point, not to go too down, far down the, under, the insurance path, but the underwriting process uh, brings out, uh, the questions that come through the underwriting process bring out the risks that um, are apparent in the exposures. So. If I get a copy of all the questions, it'll start to sort of maybe get us thinking about how we can go down even different avenues, or even as we reach out to some of the folks that Tiffany suggested, maybe we can ask some more pointed questions. So I, I appreciate that, because um, that sort of got me thinking as well. So I'll do some more research on that as well. Thank you. Okay, and then one other thing, and this would be Andy would have to do, would be to reach out to the town's insurance company to see if the town would be taking on any added liabilities. I, I, I don't know, but it may be a question that would be worth ac asking. Um, I, I can check it. It wouldn't be a town run facility, so therefore it would be a private entity that would be insured. But um, I can ask. Yeah, it's, it's an yeah, easy question. And I would tell you as an insurance person, um, he's right. Uh, if the business is operating legally and it's, I mean, the town, I mean, anyone can sue anybody, but the, the liability that the town would incur would be, a, would be a stretch. But obviously we all see how 
uh, people will reach out in, in a manner of ways, but um, it would be unlikely that uh, it would be an issue um, that would uh, generate a, an insurance discussion, but it's a, it's a good question. What, okay. what I can add to that discussion to show you that I've been tracking this and diligently trying to get information is there's a uh, very close town that didn't do the moratorium like we did. And they had an applicant come in to establish a business prior to the moratorium and it got shot down recently, like last earlier this month or the end of last month by the planning zoning commission. And now they're being sued. So that's a situation where the town's insurance would be involved. So um, the fact that we put a moratorium in there and we got a town attorney's opinion that we can extend that while we work on it to push it to a referendum on an advisory question on how the board of selectmen should move forward. I think we're doing the right thing. But as, as Peter stated, I don't think if the planning and zoning commission uh, rules and then uh, the vote was to allow these and they did it properly, we wouldn't have any liability. And I have seen that, I won't, I won't belabor the point, but I have seen exactly the scenario you're describing and you're right. The town wouldn't really effectively have any liability. If you're following the rules, you're, you're not liable. So in that case, I have seen it specifically. So I, I think you're right on point on that, Andy. Thank you. Okay, great. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. Moving, moving on. Our next thing would be uh, the proclamation, and I just want to go on record uh, because a lot of people have started throwing some daggers at me, and that's okay. I'm tough. Uh, my thing is, I I am big on inclusiveness, and I want to make sure that we. I just get so so nervous. I see nationwide where every group is is vying for something, and I think sometimes the results are opposite of what people are hoping, where people get more contentious, more issues, more problems, more uh, irritation, whatever the proper words are. You know, to me, inclusiveness is everybody. and I looking at we have a possible, you know, I look at this as as an option to include everybody, irregardless of whatever. You know, if, if you are a human being that walks on two legs, everybody should be included. Uh, and so that's basically where I'm coming from. Um, you know, I keep reading and rereading this thing. Um, yeah, you know, I'll let Tiffany, if, if you want to start, since this was your project that you took on, um, you know, and then at some point, you know, I'd like to state what my concerns are, my thoughts, uh, and then, you know, we'll open it up for discussion, I guess. So, Tiffany? Actually, Andy has his hand raised. Oh, Do you want to acknowledge him first? Yes, thank Andy. you. Thank you, Selectman Dilly and, and Chairman Larson. So I just want to let you know what is on the books as far as uh, proclamation requests um, and protocols. So in Hebron, we're very vague with that. So what you have in front of you, we prepared in the office. Uh, Selectman Dilly sent us in um, what she thought would be um, appropriate. So you'll see it's it's got written proposed on it. And the the proclamation protocol all we have in Hebrew says proclamation requests will be considered on an individual basis. So that's where we are tonight. It was brought up, uh, a proposal was submitted in front of the board today. Now you guys can act how you deem uh, fit. Okay, thank you. Tiffany? Sure, so um, a couple of things. So this proclamation was taken from, a, uh, the language was taken from a, other towns and municipalities approved proclamations from last year and this current year. So none of the language has been created by me. Um, it's language that I've kind of, um, you know, uh, copied, so to speak, um, from other places that have done similar proclamations. 
Um, I kept it intentionally short um, because a lot of them were quite long. I made sure to not include anything um, about flag protocols because some proclamations we were looking at at our last meeting had that in there. And so I wanted to be sensitive to that. So I'll just say a couple of quick things. Um, first, I, I am disappointed that people who requested that their letters be read into the record were not read into the record tonight. Um, I thought some of those letters were quite powerful. Um, and I think that it seems a little inconsistent with what we've done previously. <laughs> And perhaps that warrants a larger discussion at a future meeting. I think I would appreciate that to understand that. Um, and secondly, yes, inclusiveness is about everyone, um, but it's also about including people who have been routinely kept out of certain civil rights in this country as the LGBTQ community has had to fight for. Um, and I think that Hebron is an inclusive place, and we can we say that to people who move here. We say that over and over again in all of our communications. So we can choose to live that value um, and acknowledge this today, um, because I think that that makes a strong the strongest statement about how we feel about inclusivity in our town. So um, again, a lot of this language was um, brought from other proclamations approved throughout Connecticut and Massachusetts. So I kind of borrowed politely um, from those areas um, and I kept it short so that we could read through it tonight. Okay. The things and and the easiest thing is, is going down the list. One, two, three, the fourth one, where we remain vigilant against uh, well, lights, continued discrimination against, and it says the LB, LGBTQ. I wanted to change that to discrimination against any community. Uh, you know, um, period, any community. And then the next line down, we affirm in our support for all residents. You know, so I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to include everybody. I'm not. It, it, but that's but the my point, concern. I'm trying to con include, you know. <laughs> I just feel it's important. I'm trying, you know, I see nationally, everybody is tearing everybody apart and it's got to stop. And I'm looking at this as an, a possible way that we can try to, to blend this along with everybody else, because everybody is important in this town. As I say, anybody that walks on, on two legs, I mean, everybody should be inclusive in our town. And that's that's where I'm coming from. I, I, I just hate, you know, if I can, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. So no, I apologize I, if I'm not. No, I, so I think, um... I, you know, again, this is about acknowledging a community whose very civil rights are under attack right now. Um, we have, you know, frankly, we have Republican-led states that are passing laws that will allow for um, people to check children's genitals in terms of what sport they participate in. And we might not want to talk about that, but that's the reality of what's happening across the country. And so I agree with you, Dan, that of, of course, we remain vigilant against discrimination against anybody. But I think in the context of this particular proclamation, this is about recognizing a certain sect of the community, which is how I see proclamations in general. We do a lot of proclamations where we acknowledge people um, with learning disabilities or people who um, you know, from different parts of our community. They're all included in our community. We're just acknowledging them through a specific proclamation. So that's why I wanted to go this route. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think I'd be, yeah. if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be interested in, in what Mark and Gail have to say, because obviously the three of us were at the last meeting and we started to explore the topic a little bit. So I, if, if you don't mind, Sure. I would be interested in Mark, hearing from Mark and Gail, just so we can get sort of some uh, some additional perspective uh, uh, on this. Thank you. You want to go first, Gail? 
She's on mute. I'll go first. I'll have to go back to my New York days when I was in theater groups. So I've always dealt with all kinds of people in the community and haven't been in theater groups for many, many years. Um, I've seen a lot of people being put down, prejudiced against, not having civil rights. So all people, I agree with Dan, all people are entitled to their right to their rights. And what Tiffany's trying to do here is call attention to one particular group that is currently under fire. So I think we ought to vote. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Gail that we should vote, but just two quick comments. Um, sometimes people who struggle or people need extra protection so therefore the specificity of some proclamations and Dan, everybody knows you have a good heart and to want everybody to be equal and that everybody gets equal protection and equal attention and protection from discrimination is, is, kind of, is, is noble. But sometimes there are certain groups and certain times when things are happening, we have to take a step forward and be more specific um, I've never investigated a hate crime in Hebron. I've never, whether it be racial, uh, based on sexuality, anything. In Hartford, I did. And they're terrible. So um, I don't see what harm this does to anybody. If you're offended by this, um, you really have to take a big step to be offended by this. Because who is it hurting by making a proclamation saying we want to look out for somebody who needs looking out for? So. Um, I'm in favor of it, and I would like to vote too, guys. Okay, Peter. I I, I agree. I appreciate though. I think Mark hit it right in the head. I appreciate everyone's comments. I appreciate the work that Tiffany did, and and it is Pride Month, so it is it is specific as well as as others have articulated. So, um, I, I again, I like Mark said. I appreciate your sentiment, Dan, but this I think is something that is very specific and, and as such, just like when we did the, uh, I'm sorry, Gil, I forget the name uh, that you feel so oh, passionate. Sure. <laughs> yes, um, obviously uh, would at that, to, to make a correlation, we would say, well, why are we singling out one group of children who are struggling? Um, but it, it's for a reason, it's specific to correlate to uh, to a broader message that the, the, the community is trying to deliver at that moment. So um, I, I, I'm on board and, and as I just heard, I, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call the question, let's vote. Okay, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't get off that easy, young lady. No, I thought I thought I was calling the question, so I thought that moved it right to a vote. Oh, okay, he, she's right. But okay, yes, I was going to have you read the thing, Mr. Chairman. I was going to have you read it. Uh, yeah, oh, I can read it. Sure. The question first, and then then you're going to read it. <laughs> so Andy had something. I was just going to say you need to read it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or would you like me to read it now? Uh, uh, no, no, because we have to call the question first. Then, <laughs> heaven forbid, we don't do the procedure. Okay, we'll I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Tiffany? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Gail? Aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, I. Okay, now Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Whereas Hebron is a town that values diversity and inclusion and is committed to equal rights and opportunities for all its residents. And whereas Hebron observes June as a time to honor the LGBTQ community and reflect upon the important contributions of LGBTQ residents to the town and the United States as a whole. And whereas the town celebrates the accomplishments of the LGBTQ community towards securing important rights and freedoms, often through struggle and adversity. And whereas we remain vigilant against continued discrimination against the LGBTQ community, especially the trans community. And whereas we affirm our support for our LGBTQ residents and stand with them to protect their civil rights and ability to live openly without fear. Now, therefore, we, the Hebron Board of Selectmen, hereby proclaim June 2022 as LGBTQ Pride Month, and we encourage all residents to join us in continuing to build 
a culture of inclusiveness and acceptance for all. Okay, hearing the proclamation, all in favor signify by, do we vote on this? Yes, we do. We are saying my very saying aye, we just do it. Um, again, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman, aye. Uh, Mark? Mark Barbera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Do we read these? I don't remember. No, that's why I was a proposed. So what you voted on earlier would have said to move forward with the proposed motion, read it, and then vote on it to accept it. But it's fine. You, you got it done. Okay. <laughs> mine is a terrible thing, so I left mine outside. Um, okay, Andy, uh, our next item. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, item 9A, this is something we do pretty much in the, the, every year, um, review board of selectmen summer meeting schedule, attaches the approved 2022 meeting schedule. The selectmen should discuss the schedule of July meetings. The town manager proposes to cancel the first July 2022 selectmen's meeting. And then there's a motion moved that the board of selectmen cancel the July 7th, 2022 selectmen's meeting as recommended by the town manager. Without, okay. without going into too many de details, you can speak if you want to. No, I mean, first off, it's right after the 4th. Anybody that's trying to do anything on the 4th of July, uh, this gives them a chance to not have to come back. Um, it just it just works well, and hopefully everybody will be happy uh, with this action. So motion would be that the Hebrew Board of Selectmen cancel the, the, the July 7th 2022 selectmen's meeting as recommended by the town manager. A discussion? Hearing none, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Gail? Gail Wickman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Okay, our next thing is a little space here. Next is 9B, approve and sign the tax rate bill. The Board of Finance set the mill rate at their meeting on May 26, 2022. The tax rate bill will be finalized by the revenue collector uh, and there's a draft attached. Donna will show that. Uh, then there's a proposed motion. Okay. Um, do we need to state what that amount was? The tax rate? No, I can't see it. I'm sorry. The number is 31.70 mil. Thank you. Uh, Move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve and sign the tax rate bill dated June 2nd, 2022, as presented by the revenue collector. And as a footnote, that tax rate is, is being proposed is 31.70. Uh, so hearing the motion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wichman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Our next is the agenda for Dude. July 21st, 2022. Right. Um, okay, and again, it, uh, correct. So anybody has anything that, that they want to get added onto the agenda or what have you. Um, so I think everything else is on here. So if anybody sees anything, make the phone call. 
any papers? Our next would be our consent agenda. And it's going to be a long, long meeting, but I know Gail has got a number of uh, amendments or, or corrections to the minutes. So we are going to have to uh, vote on E separately is going to be the easiest way of doing it. So our first would be to approve the uh, minutes of April 21st, 2022. Okay, you want me to start, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Okay, um, on the third page, under eight, old business, very simple. We just have to, under A, the uh, offer, it's not attached, it was presented. We do not have a schedule attached. And then down under cannabis, which is subsection B, take out that sentence attached as a memo, as we obviously don't have a memo attached. And the same thing with C, any other old business. Those are kind of minor, but then on the page with new business, we have to get to item C, approved purchase of new police vehicle. The information, Andrew Tierney presented the information regarding the acquisition of a new police vehicle and explained. So that these are legal documents, folks, they have to be yep. corrected. Um, and I have anything else on that one? Oh, yes. Under E, budget communication. Uh, the whole the first paragraph, you go down to the next, it is appropriate. That paragraph and the three items under it were not part of our meeting. Um, so they that needs to be stricken out. Did I have that? Thanks. And now under item nine I um uh, it, yeah, it's it's uh, just um, um, a sentence. Uh, the word is brought and the T was missing. So that's, my eyes were on a roll then. Now, under the last page, anticipated executive session, um, Dan Lawson invited A. Tierney into executive session at, and the time was actually 9.12. The board came out of executive session at 9.23. Then under adjournment, Gail moved to adjourn the meeting at 9.23, not 9.09. Okay. Does anybody have any other items on that, on that agenda or that uh, minutes? Hearing none, I ask uh, that we vote on the April 21st, 2022 regular meeting minutes as amended. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Casper, aye. And myself, aye. Okay, make a motion to approve the minutes of May 5th, 2022, the regular meeting. Okay, uh, <laughs> on page two, Douglas Library uh, resignation. It was me, G. Richmond, who moved that the Hebron Board of Selectmen accept the resignation. Then on commission on aging, where it was three, it should be two people expressed an interest. And um, so the name that should be omitted is Catherine McSweeney. The two remaining should be Angela and Carol. Then moved that the Hebrew Board of Selectmen make the following appointments and two separate motions were made. Right. Because the, uh, Angela Curriton and one and Carol Wheeler for the other. Um, the motions passed with all in favor. Now, let me see. 
Now we have to get down to the page with um, under cannabis where pollinator pathway resolution. Um, somehow it says attached and there's a whole paragraph. That resolution was not attached and should not be part of our minutes. Um, then I went down two more pages. The resolution um, became effective upon adoption. And it says, in witness whereof, that sentence is not appropriate there. That's not what we did. And the last page, the Board of Selectmen members agreed to table the liaison reports until the next meeting, not next week. I think that did it, Dan. Okay. Any other, anybody else have any other uh, changes to those minutes or corrections? Hearing none, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Myself, aye. Make a motion to approve the minutes of May 12th, 2022, the public hearing. Do you have anything on that one? Uh, Gail? No, I'm waiting for May 19th. Oh, okay. Uh, so does anybody have any issues with the minutes of the public hearing? Hearing none, all in favor of acceptance? Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Gasper, aye. And myself, aye. Um, move that we approve the uh, minutes of the May 19th regular meeting. I know Gail's got some corrections. I think we should note uh, right up on top that Peter was there only until 746. You all might remember that. And actually Dan called the meeting to order at 701. I usually write that down. Okay, item five, good to know. Eliminate special recognition and it should be Raymond Brook Preserve Grand opening June 4th, 2022 at 9 a.m. Then Farmers and Artisan Market, it should be noted at Saturday, June 4th, the 18th, which is Hebron Day, July 2nd, 23rd, August 6th, and 20th. Um, and I think this is a typo, and the surrounding communities on the second line down under that, um, Bible producers and crafters you and the surrounding community. Um, town manager's report, item seven, the first line, A Tierney is working with the town manager. No, A Tierney is working with the town planner. Um, and what is that? Item B, the opera plan. Um, again, it says attached and it should be presented because we're not attaching those things. Now, next page after that one, there's a paragraph called the selectman may wish to continue. That whole paragraph that doesn't belong in there. It was not what occurred that evening. Um, and then there's the next paragraph has Andy's name stuck at the end of it. Uh, eliminate that. And then, of course, we have to capitalize the T in town of Hebron on the next one. Um, and if you're going to go in, uh, in order, it would be that Peter left the meeting at that time, 746. Communications with the Hebron community. The paragraph down is a list of current avenues of communication utilized by the town was presented. Um, and Atini stated it may be time to reconsider ways of communicating with the community and budget informational provided. That whole list of items 
were not items that we discussed that evening. Today. How do you want to finished. correct that? Or, um, or do you have, or do you want to check in, or how do you want to correct that section? Okay, okay. let me go back. I'm sorry. Um, the list was not something that um, was presented as a list like that. It should be a list of current avenues of communication usually utilized by the town was presented. That's it. He said it may be time to reconsider. That's something for us to do in the future. But all those items that were listed there should not be um, on there. So it's, well, it's whatever everyone thinks. Okay. Is that it for that, that, that one? That's, I think I'm done. Okay. Uh, Dan, I have a change um, yes. under my public comment. Um, it's just a missing word. It should read, ask for a moment to reflect on and acknowledge. So it's missing the word and there. Okay. I missed that, huh, Tiffany? <laughs> well, I caught it just now, to be fair. So yeah, <laughs> just and okay. right there. Thank you. Okay. You can uh, make the, the the minutes of our meeting are the legal records of our meetings, and it's why I'm always very fussy that they have the right time that we adjourn, the right time that we will call to order. Um, what was actually said, I I think we need to be careful. Okay, no, I agree. I personal bias. No, I I agree. So hearing the uh, changes, all in favor. Uh, of the changes as stated for the May 19th, 2022 regular meeting, signify by saying aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Richmond, aye. Mark? Good job, Gail. Mark Rivera, aye. <laughs> Peter? Here, thank you, Gail. Uh, Peter Casper, aye. And myself, aye. And then last would be. Uh, make a motion to approve the following uh the minutes of the june 2nd 2022 uh regular meeting and i have a change on, that was just the three of us um, yeah i have a, i have a change mr chairman so for additions changes to the agenda um yep. can that first sentence just simply read to discuss the pride month proclamation period um i don't think we need that additional language in there that wasn't it wasn't sure. exactly what I said so um no oh, that's fine okay I think we can just simplify it and say that I asked it because I did ask to request a proclamation not a declaration I think it's important that we're precise with that yep no nope. I think that is very very fair um okay that was all I had okay Um, Peter, did you anything? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, all in favor of the June 2nd, 2022 regular meeting, uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman will abstain as I was not present. Correct. Um, Mark? I wasn't present either, so I'll abstain. And I'm glad to know that you sound better and are doing better, by the way. Hey, thanks, thanks, Dan. Uh, um, Peter? Peter Casper, I. And myself, I. Okay. Um, and then the tax refund as listed. Mm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wishman, I. Mark. Mark Rivera, I. Uh, Peter. Peter Casper, I. And myself, I. Okay. Our next thing would be our liaison reports. <clears throat> that would go right, uh, Tiffany. 
Yes, I have um, an update from um, Open Space. Um, the Open Space Committee will be attending Hebron Day as part of its continued public outreach um, and open space maps will be displayed. Um, at the planning and zoning meeting this past Tuesday, um, the, the PNZ voted to approve a referral to the town regarding the eight and a half acre open space acquisition of the Raymond parcel, which is along the west side of Millstream Road and um, relates that as a special meeting um, that we're going to have on June 28th. Um, the Salmon River Watershed Partnership will continue its um, stream water quality monitoring analysis. So the monitoring will begin at the end of June and extends to the end of August. Um, volunteers who will be performing the monitoring include Chris Frey, Frank Zickus, and Ann Zickus. Um, this monitoring assesses temperature and some other pertinent water quality measurements. So it's a, it's a good, important project. Um, and that is what I have for this evening. Okay. Uh, Gail? Gail wants to go back and tell you that she missed something on uh, an old, um, on the April 21st meetings. I can't read my own scribbling. But I think it's important to note under item four public comment that David Rose was present. Um, the whatever oh. name was written in there was misinterpreted. Now, you want me to do liaison reports? Um, no. Oh, we got a vote on that, huh? Yes. Okay. Um, stepping back, I'm so asking. So I'm amending that... my amendment. <laughs> okay. Uh, that we revote on, and that was the which one? April twenty first. So I'm making a motion that we comment. revisit and make. A, another correction uh, on the April 21st uh, regular meeting, including uh, David Rose as being, uh, how do you want to word that, being present at the meeting? Yes, under public comment, it says another name. It says D. Gross email was read, and it should be David Rose's email was read into the minutes. By Donald. Okay. So is that clear to everyone? Okay. Just get the right guy there. Yeah. Um, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Gail? Gail Wisman, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Myself, aye. Okay. Now back to Liaison. <laughs> you are, you're on, Gail. Oh, okay. The Commission on Aging Senior Center, um, they're the intake, intake site for individuals needing assistance with water or sewer bills through the state's new program to help with those expenses. Um, the renter rebate applications have also now been taken. And the Senior Center is proud to say that they, re they are showing movies again um, once a month on this second Monday, and they're going to have a big trip up to Rhines Deli for a special luncheon on June 23rd. The Douglas Library, they have the new 3D printer with a multi-material add-on. Patrons can make appointments for staff assistance, and this was purchased with donations. Um, teens are busy this summer. They'll be having events on Tuesday at 2.30 in the community room. And the Hebron Board of Ed, most of you probably know that graduation is tomorrow night for the sixth graders. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mark. Uh, speaking of graduations, we had one last night. Uh, senior class graduated. Um, it's always a, a festive and great night, but you're always a little tense, hoping that the kids can stay safe. And they stayed safe. And uh, this morning, the uh, middle school had their step up. I don't know why they'll call it a graduation. It's a step up. So that went successfully. Um, everybody's sad it, it, over the loss of Scott Leslie. He's helping transition the new mm -hmm. superintendent in. And um, I know personally, I'm going to miss him. And uh, he's as good as it gets at anything. And um, I don't think you could you could 
find enough accolades to describe what Scott Leslie has meant to this community. And I wanted to state that. Also, somewhat related to school, since the Uvalde shooting, I've gotten more requests in the past two weeks to do active shooter trainings than I ever have. And I discussed this with Peter Casper at length yesterday. Um, and uh, all of our officers, uh, ALICE certifications, if you're not familiar with ALICE, ALICE is an active shooter response where the police and teachers and students work together. Um, so we're gonna work hard at getting everybody going with that again. And um, for those of you who didn't know, I'm actually an active shooter instructor. So I'm gonna be going out to some churches and trying to be a little better at this. And uh, you know, people are people are uh, a lot more afraid than I've experienced in the past. And uh, that's troubling to me. So as a town, we're gonna do the best we can to uh, make make people feel safe and actually be safe. So I know that wasn't quite a ram uh, comment, but I wanted to get that out there, guys. Thanks. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Peter. Uh, nothing new for the two boards, uh, the board and the commission that I, uh, I'm a liaison on. So nothing for me, thank you. Okay. Uh, I've got uh, Andy, first off. Yes. I'm, uh... Happy to announce that uh, um, now I forgot the name of the company. Holzner is back in town. The generators have arrived for the pump stations. They're building yeah. the uh, the concrete products that we needed are built They're up at United Concrete. The parts that we needed to assemble and install them are happening as we speak. So the project has resumed, and we're hoping to we have a finish date of uh, before Christmas. Okay. Beautiful. Is that going to be a problem with the bonding because it was supposed to be done by a certain time or? I, it, it's, I, I, you know, if, if it wasn't, if it was in somebody's control, I would say yes, but clearly this is um, an extension of COVID not being the availability. Same thing with the meters, Dan. Um, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to write a letter stating our, our case and I, I can't imagine somebody not being realistic and know it's not anybody's fault other than the pandemic. Well, you just, you just can't get stuff. Um, my reports, a couple of things. Uh, one, the uh, fire department uh, corporation, they handed out the, they do a, a uh, uh, scholarship. Wow, brain went. Um, to people getting into, you know, different emergency type fields. And so uh, the recipient this year was Mr. Custer, who's graduated out of RAM uh, this year and is going into paramedic training. So that was nice. Um, and then the only other thing is uh, the Peters uh, house is coming along very well. Uh, you know, the, the people uh, on the Hebrew and Historic Properties Commission, um, John Menard, uh, my wife, Pat, um, everybody's been putting in all different kinds of hours, cleaning, and it's really a beautiful structure. And I really hope people during the uh, family day events will be able to go up there. Plus, uh, Code is doing uh, many things up there, and I can't tell you what they all are because I haven't been involved in those meetings. But I know they're going to be doing things up there. Uh, you know, and then I guess also at Hebron Day, I think they're having a car show too. Andy, you know about that? Yes, yes, uh, they are. Just a lot of different things going on. Rich Marcy's um, done a great job. Yes. Yep. Um, the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony at the at the new bridge went great. Uh, anybody who hasn't gone down there should really take a walk down. There is a parking lot. Uh, with an entrance off of uh, Mill Stream. It's, I can't tell you the exact how far up, but there's actually a sign there. There's a small parking lot that you can walk down to the bridge. Boy Scouts did a little uh, two picnic table picnic site down there. Uh, and I have not myself walked it, but I guess that literally you can walk all the way up to, uh, you know, the Kinney Road uh, 85 uh 
Church Street area. So other than that, good exercise. Um, and I think that's everything I've got. So our next thing would be public comment again. Uh, unless anybody has anything else. Hearing none. Uh, Donna? There is no one indicating that they want to make public comment at this time. Okay. Well, with that, people, Gail? At 820, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, and hopefully see everybody at Hebron Day. Thank you. Good night. Oh, good meeting, guys. Thank One you. Last good job, day. everybody. Good One last thing. I just got a text. Oh. The fire department also made a donation to uh, Hebron Interface. Okay. Um, and I don't have any of the amounts. So, thank you. Good night. Good night, good night guys. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.